keep skirt by it. Junior, you smoked that old greenie right out of the sky. My name is Sydney Wells, and hunting and fishing is in my blood. You may not know it yet, but it's in yours too. Join me as I travel the world on an epic adventure. This is Barcel Outdoors. They're building a third lane highway between Umphrey and Wabasica, which is sorely needed in the state of Arkansas because oh. it's a heavily traveled thoroughfare through the whole state. So What's up, Sam? Hey, You're doing all right. Good to see you. Shine, my Thank boy. <laughs> Let's get it. We're going to make some green bean casserole. You look like you're moving a little slow this morning. No. We just got to the Flooded Timber, my first time hunting Flooded Timber. Shooting time is probably here soon. We got 13 guys and girls today here with Dax Unlimited. Dad's here as well. We're feeling good, ready to go. So we're gonna get after it. We got our 20 gauges locked and loaded. Let's see if we can get some greenheads. I'm looking at a bunch of big old fat green heads right up above us. It's about to get dirty. gauge out and let her bark. All right, well, today we did a lot of watching and not much shooting. Tomorrow's a killing day. That's what everybody's saying. So I killed myself a hen and a mallard drake. My first Arkansas ducks. Scar killed a couple, I think. Killed two. Killed two. Got a solid six ducks, 13 people. <laughs> but you know what? That's hunting. That is hunting. So. Mr. Chuck now wants to go back and we're going to make some Bloody Marys. Yep. Two for three. I shot up that one bag. It's all timber, baby. Can't ask for much more. Store.barcelsports.com. Scroll over to Brands, hit Outdoors. We've got all the goods on there. We've got some sweet stuff coming up. Oh, look at him. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, this is the uh, end of our first day, and it turned out pretty good. We have had like zero wind today. Yeah, I think one mile an hour wind. Yeah. These, there's a lot of mallards uh, flying over. We've seen hundreds of ducks today, but no one to help push them into the hole. But we did kill, what, eight, eight, eight ducks? That's not bad. Not it, bad, it was fun. We'd be jumping up and down if we were back home in Illinois and killed eight mallards this morning, but this is a, uh, this has been a fun hunt. It's a beautiful place. Chuck, thanks a lot, man. We're looking forward to this afternoon and tomorrow. Thank you for coming. We've got the conservation tour this afternoon. Don't yeah. forget about that. Yeah, can't wait. All right. Yeah, there's a lot we're of things on. to see. We're in the middle of Arkansas, so Stuttgart. Stuttgart is the capital of the world 
for duck hunting. And we're here and we're trying to get it done. So the weather's not perfect, but the ducks are still flying because that's how many there are and they're dumping right into the hole. Chuck, how long are you gonna make your dog hold that duck like that? As long as you tell me to hold the dog like that. It's been three hours, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh good, good boy. boy. Good boy. So it's pretty cool. So if you didn't get to see earlier, we were kind of got out here pretty fast. So there's makeshift blinds where some of the some of the people were sitting in, waiting for the ducks to come in, and then me, Scarlett, and a couple others were just putting our backs to the trees, blending in with our surroundings, making sure that the sun's not in our face and we're not really exposing ourselves to the ducks because when they're flying over, they're looking at our decoys, they're looking for any unusual movements. But it is what it is. No wind. What you gonna do? Still got some birds on the ground. Now we're gonna get some breakfast. Thoughts on the flock master one. <laughs> Got it. Mr. Tim, I'm going to get one with you, Sydney, and Mr. Chuck, if that's okay. Obviously, you're snapping those picks, man. Snapping them. Where can they find those picks? Matt underscore Harrison yeah. 10. Give it a follow. What's up guys? Okay, so Chuck and I have made it to Max Prairie Wings, which they've been telling me, you gotta come here, you gotta come here. I've been wanting to come here ever since I entered Stuttgart. <laughs> Waterfowlers from all over the country considered a pilgrimage to Mecca to return to Max and Stuttgart, duck and rice capital of the world. Yes. And to go into those hallowed halls right there and see thousands of decoys, jackets, everything you wanna buy for the sporting life as it relates to waterfowling. And Max is a great staple here in Stuttgart. They're just good people. So when you come to Stuttgart, you have to come to Max. Sorry, this took too long. This is a really cool store. It's like the only one too. So there's only one max. And it's in Stuttgart. Alright, we're going to RT. Alright, conservation tour. Matt, we're going thingy, but it doesn't cover all through the doors. driveway, know, down the gravel water. road, <laughs> through the woods, across the bridge of death, onto the Grand Prairie in search of waterfowl this afternoon. Watch the tree limbs. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Watch the tree limb. Oh, right. A bunch of coots right coming there. to our right. Those are what uh, we don't really shoot at. Mike, tell us a fun fact about a coot that I was just flabbergasted by in the office not long ago. What? More related to actually a crane, like let's say a sandhill crane, a hooping crane, or anything like that, than they are a duck. They don't have webbed feet. They kind of have, uh, I forget what it's called, but their feet aren't totally webbed. So in their rail family. A coot is more related to a sandhill crane than they are to an actual duck. Part of the rail family. They're a part of the rail family. There you go. Honorary doctorate. <laughs> See, it's going to be fan voted. The fans will vote right. for it. Rally date. Hold on, bridge of death. Bridge of death. Oh. There's a weight limit of 300 pounds on this bridge. Oh, no. Hold your breath. How we doing? Come on, Chuck. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I see some ducks. They're Where's acting the ducks? like they don't know about the Where are the ducks? There's some ducks to our left. What, no, yeah. what kind of um, fields are these? These uh, were rice fields. These are three, excuse me, four 80 acre fields lined up right next to each other. Right now we're just kind of moseying around looking at his different property, looking at the different fields. So he was saying he's a millet field, a bean field, and a rice field. So when we pulled up there is already hundreds and hundreds of birds on them because they're just imprinting. They're going from field to field. They feel safe here and they're eating. Breaking out the So table. welcome to the conservation tour and just to let you know no conservation tour would be complete in the state of Arkansas without a conservation tour cocktail party. So in packing our conservation tour picnic basket, 
a little bottle of Pinot. Wouldn't be complete without Pinot. Next of all, a little bottle of Chardonnay migration, of course, in keeping with the conservation tour theme. My favorite. Number. There's a little sliced Jarlsberg cheese to go along with the Chardonnay. <laughs> little crackers, too, to go with it. Fresh smoked salmon right here for you, everybody. Oh, yeah. 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 Conservation tour. Conservation tour. I think I need to go on more, more of these with Chuck. There's a red. Doc, I love thank you. All right. Oh, thank you. A little Pinot. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. Pinot Grigio. Cheese ducks and, crackers. and salmon and cheese. Yeah, shout out Ducks Unlimited. This is awesome. We have so much fun. It's been great. We killed some birds. We did a Stuttgart tour, seeing what it's all about. Now we're going to watch some birds, have ourselves like a little picnic. If you support conservation, donate to Ducks Unlimited. It's for a great non for profit. And you can support our ecosystem and importantly, ducks and waterfowl. And Chuck might even throw in a cracker and cheese. Mm -hmm. I like it. A little sunset, even though sunset's gonna be a couple more hours, but. So we were talking about like intriguing, interesting things, you know? So this is really just more than just, just waterfowl, but you know, you have, you see roadkill all the time on the side of the road. You see roadkill deer, roadkill possum, roadkill raccoons, dogs, cats, you name it. But you never see a roadkill crow on the side of the road, right? You see roadkill turkeys, birds, we saw several birds on the way here, but never a roadkill crow. Why is that? There is an answer. I've heard that they're a really smart bird and they can count up to three is what I've heard. Well, I don't know about that. Not, not, no, there's a, there's a myth behind You divide by zero. <laughs> Did you get that one? <laughs> okay, they, can, they don't use their... That's not what fact check. Is. Is that the three. I don't know. You'd have to Let ask the crow whisperer. Is, 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 hey, Matt, I'm with you, buddy. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is, there's is a myth. A does it have something to do with Cheryl Crow? <laughs> All right, so the answer is, well, I like your theory. The answer is, so for every roadkill crow on the side of the road, there's another one up in the tree going, car, car, car! <laughs> 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 Dr. Karen. Oh, Literally hooks God. it, slows it. So this guy said, well, well, I talked to the sheep. And the sheep yeah. said, oh, the sheep line. The whole school was coming in to eat the chum, weren't we? All jokes aside, though, I seriously have heard that not that they know that they can count to three, but they have set stuff out for crew. You're still on that. I am, because I, I know y'all think of that. So they set some food out or something for the crows. Matt, yeah. stop. Yeah. He's, he's recording. He's recording. I've seen a video of that. <laughs> I, thank you. I'm... They sent two people in. The crow still wouldn't come down until two people left. And they did it up to three. We're oh. good? Yeah, we're good. We're good? We got T-Swift right here, guys. Oh, oh. Hey, wait, you have T-Swift on your sweatshirt? No, I took it up. I, we balled in it. All right, well, let's yeah, talk about your T-Swift addiction first. Serious. We really don't have no, to. No, we have to. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mallory Murphy. I'm the social media and content specialist. I love working for Ducks Unlimited because I love dirt. They love wet dirt. And I always say there's a lot of passion that walks the halls at DU and it's an honor to be a part of that and bring the passion of my lifestyle and the work that DU does and everything just comes full circle. How's everybody doing? Matt Harrison here with Ducks Unlimited. I'm the communications and stakeholder specialist here. One of my favorite things about Ducks Unlimited, what I truly love about DU is the mission, being an avid waterfowl hunter, I like giving back, I like preserving waterfowl for our future. So really and truly just the mission DU represents and what our conservation basis is, that's, that's what drives me to work for DU. Chris Jennings, the senior editor of Ducks Unlimited Magazine. I like working at Ducks Unlimited because everyone believes in the cause and it's such a great cause for wetlands conservation. So hey, I'm, I'm Mike Brazier, Senior Waterfowl Scientist for Ducks Unlimited. I've worked for this organization for 18 years, and it's the best organization that I could ever imagine working for because it defines who I am, what I, what I was growing up, waterfowl, wetlands, being outside, and the mission is fantastic. Leaving something better than, than we found it. It's, it's a great organization. Hi, Karen Waldrop with Ducks Unlimited. I'm the Chief Conservation Officer. One of my favorite things about Ducks Unlimited is truly our mission. Right? We're conserving for the future. We're conserving this beautiful land. We're conserving waterfowl and wetlands for the future to use. But none of it could happen without the many volunteers and all of the supporters that we have for Ducks Unlimited. So thank you to all of you. I'm Chuck Smith. I'm a volunteer for Ducks Unlimited. I've been a volunteer for many, many years, going back to earlier when I was 
state chairman for the state of Tennessee, which was a lot easier in those days because there were only 48 states when I was state chairman of Tennessee. But today, I, I, what I love about volunteering for Ducks Unlimited is their science approach to conservation and everything that Ducks Unlimited does is based on data and science and what's best for the resource and that's why I'm a supporter of DU and always will be. Can I go again and yeah. say the reason I love working for Ducks Unlimited is because of guys like this who trust the science to, to guide the mission, the guide our decisions. That's right, science That's mission. It. All right, no sheep though. <laughs>